What's going on guys, it's your boy DPJ here today with another Destiny video and today I bring you a noob's guide on how to get the Outbreak Prime, the exotic raid pulse rifle. I will make this tutorial as simple as possible, as to be honest it is a little difficult to understand certain steps. But before we start guys, if you do enjoy the video and it does help you out, leaving a like is very much appreciated. Let's try and reach 5000 likes, that would be insane. Okay, so to start, you need a fire team of six players. If all six of you plan on getting this weapon, you need to have two players using each class. So two titans, two warlocks, and two hunters. Subclasses users do not matter, just use what suits you best. I'll explain later in the video why this is very important. You then need to obviously load up the Wrath of the Machine raid. And if you don't know, throughout this raid, there are hidden monitors which you need to activate. There are five throughout this raid that need activating. These upon activating deactivate lasers allowing you to take a path to a secret chest which unlocks this exotic weapon quest. Now these monitors are hidden in sneaky places and if you don't know where they are I will show you guys now. The first one is located in the room where you face off against Volzik the Archpriest for the second time. You can activate this before or after the fight, it's really up to you. It's located in the second room on your left. Simply jump up into the ceiling vent, follow the waypoint and activate the monitor. The second one is located just after the Vorsic encounter. As you come to the jumping puzzle, follow the path I take in this video. It's located basically in the same room the secret chest is located. Okay, so the third monitor you need to activate is located just after you defeat the siege machine. What you need to do is, instead of jumping down to collect that loot, you need to jump off the back of the siege machine and head back up the slope. On the left hand side as you head up the slope, you need to peep over the side of the wall. You will see a wall panel which you can shoot and blow out, allowing you to jump in. Once you've jumped in, follow the waypoint and activate the monitor. The next monitor is the most difficult to do and it takes a lot of communication from your entire fire team. So you will eventually come to the server room. Here you need to kill all enemies until the lights come on and head straight through to the room with all the canisters and the black diamond in the center. While in this room, four fire team members need to stand on a certain order of canisters. That order will be shown on screen now and this is the easy part. I will call this the initiation process. On the wall behind each section of canisters there are numbers you can't really miss. There are four sections of canisters which are labelled 00 to 03, not 1 to 4. 
the order here doesn't really matter though as long as guardians are on these canisters at the same time okay so here you can see under section 03 you can see my teammate portal runner 303 standing on the furthest canister away onto the next one here you can see section 00, you can see a sender standing in canister set 200, standing on the fourth canister from the back wall. Okay, so the next one you can see Doug117 in canister section 01, standing in canister set 101, on the furthest canister away. And lastly, we see Viper in canister section 02, standing in canister set 402 on the third one from the back wall. You can see the exact positions four members of your fire team need to stand on these canisters with the diagram on screen now, just to help you out further if you need it. Once everyone is in position, just stand there for about 10 seconds. This might not be needed, but just do it to be sure. Once 10 seconds are up, all four canister guardians need to each stand looking down upon their section. So the first player needs to stand away in command looking over section 00. Player 2 looks over section 01. Player 3 over section 02. And player 4 over section 03. Now this is very important. They need to know which canister is what as they will be awaiting command from the two remaining guardians who will tell them which canisters they have to jump on. To make things clearer, on screen now you can see a diagram of the canister room. The canister in each section is labelled in columns, which are quite easy to see. The thing that might be a little confusing though, is the canister rows in each section. Let's look at the diagram and use section 00 for an example. You can see the rows on screen now. The closest row to the platform is row 0. The next one is row 1, then row 2, then row 3 and then row 4 and 5. The columns are labelled in the game so you shouldn't really mess that up but again on screen now we have that diagram so the columns in these four sections are seen on screen now these are column zero seen by each column starting with the digit zero column one in each section starts with the digit one column two will start with the digit two column three will start with the digit three column four with four and five with five now once four players have got the hang of the positioning of each canister like i said one needs to look over each section standing on the platform closest to the black diamond the remaining two guardians need to head back to the server room now in the server room on the left and right sides are two monitors. If you follow the path on screen now from the start of the server room, you will find them no problem. One player needs to go to each of the two monitors. Now it's important to know that the left side monitor is monitor one and the right side monitor is monitor two. Monitor one has a SIVA logo in red behind it. After doing the initiation process, these monitors in the server room will both have the message of activate monitor. The right side monitor does not need to be activated or touched at all only the left side monitor but before you activate it you and the other person in the server room need to first learn a little binary code nothing hard at all the purpose of this is basically because the numbers that pop up on the screens in the server room pop up in binary code on screen now you can see all possibilities of code that can pop up on these two monitors you can see 0000, 0, 0, 0 equals 0, 0, 0, 0001 equals 1, 0, 0, 0010 0 equals 2, 0, 0, 0011 0, 0, equals 3, 0, 0100 0, 0 equals 4, and 0101 0, 0, 0, 0, equals 5. It's really important to know and learn these six codes, especially the guys in the server room, as when they pop up on your screen, you need to call out the actual number and not the binary code. It makes it easier for the people in the canister room to find the canister they have to jump on. Plus there is the timer, so taking long will reset the entire process. So you've learned a little binary code. So this is how the process works. Once you've activated the monitor in the server room, remember that it has to be the left side monitor. The binary code will pop up. But one also pops up on the monitor on the right hand side of the server room too. The left hand side monitor player reads his binary code and calls out the number it equals. So for instance if 0000, 0, 0, 0 pops up you need to call out column 0. And then for instance if 0011 0, 1, 1 pops up on the monitor on the right hand side of the server room the person watching over that monitor calls out row 3. It's important to remember left side monitor is column and right side monitor is row. It's actually really easy once you get the hang of it. 
Now on each screen, upon activated once, if the people jump on their canisters in time, each monitor will show four binary codes. We start with section 00 in the canister room. So the first two callouts from the left and right monitors are for the person looking over section 00 in that canister room. The second callout will be for the person looking over section 01. The third callout will be for the person looking over section 02. And the fourth callout will be for the person looking over section 03 in that canister room. If you mess up and jump on the wrong canister, the process will reset and you will just have to activate the monitors again from that server room and start the process again. The binary numbers though are randomised so there's a massive chance they won't come in the same order. Just remember, upon activating the monitor on the left hand side of the server room a code will pop up on the screen and then one will pop up on the monitor on the right hand side of the server room which by the way does not need to be activated. I will say it again, the monitor on the right hand side of the server room does not need to be activated or even touched. Just look for the code once the left hand side monitor has been activated and call out once the person looking over the left hand side monitor has called out. Remember, left side is column, right side is row. And the first two call outs are for the person looking over section 00. It's as simple as that. Now once you get this down, and you can reset it multiple times by the way, but once you get it down, the black diamond in the canister room will open up. Within that black diamond is the fourth monitor in this raid to activate, deactivating the fourth set of lasers guarding that chest at the end, which gives you this exotic weapon quest. I will note as well that there is a chest inside this black diamond, which does include an exotic engram. Okay, so once you've passed this stage, continue on to the last boss fight. Once you've slain Axis in that final encounter, on the back platform, if you look over the edge, a panel has blown off. You simply jump down and follow this secret path to the final monitor, which is the fifth monitor. Deactivate it and head to that chest. Open it up and obtain this exotic weapon quest. From here, it's quite easy. It's called Channeling the Corruption. The quest here tells you to talk to Shiro at the Iron Temple. The next step of the bounty is called Be the Battery, where you have to complete a Nightfall Strike, complete three public events in the Plaguelands, Arkham Forge Encounters counts for this, three Crucible or Heroic Strikes, and get 50 kills with a Pulse Rifle. And you have to do these as a fire team of a warlock, hunter and titan. Which is why at the start of the video I said you need to use two of each character. So from this point you split into two teams of three. One of each character per fire team. Once you have done this part of the quest. The next part is to synchronise the SIVA engine's energy flow. Here you head into your inventory and inspect the SIVA engine. You will see that it states that you will need to be in a social space. So do just that. When your fire team inspects the receiver engine, click the first node. Now on screen now are the selection of nodes needed for each character class. Once all fire team members have entered their correct selection, all highlight and click on the far right node and another two will appear. Click on them and a final node appears. Click on that and you're done. You then go and see Shiro again. The next step is called Parts of a Hole. Here you have to actively explore the playgrounds. Just basically kill everything in sight for this one. Then you have to complete three Arkham Forge encounters and then you have to destroy Sepix in the Sepix Perfected Strike. Once that's done, you then have to equalize the Sea of Engines energy flow across patterns. For this again, you and your fire team need to be in a social space. Once there, inspect the Sea engine and on screen now you will see the exact patterns you need for each three classes. Once everyone has the correct selection of nodes, you all need to press the final node and then head back to Shiro at the Iron Temple. The next step is to run the raid again as you need to defeat Devil Splicer leaders in the Wrath of the Machine raid. So basically you need to defeat all three main bosses. Once you have slain all three raid bosses, again you have to inspect the Siva engine in your inventory, again in a social space. This one though is a little more of a pain in the ass. I will warn you guys, do not press any of the nodes yet. Luckily some sexy bastard has made a calculator meaning you don't have to do much here besides typing a few numbers on a website. Now this website will be linked in the video description. What you have to do is enter all numbers you see when hovering over the nodes. 
when inspecting your Siva engine in your inventory. So enter the nodes in the correct order on the website. Once you have done that on the website, click find solutions. Numerous solutions will come up for you to enter. Simply enter one and wait for your other team members to do the same. Be warned though, entering a wrong code and clicking the last node will fuck it up. And I do believe you have to get another Siva engine unstable from Shiro, but don't worry, it doesn't cost a thing. So what you do is just discard the one you fucked up and grab another one. Same for your fire team. Now once you and your fire team have used this calculator, double check you've entered every number on the site correctly, write in the solution and click the last node at the same time. And then guys you are done. Head to Shiro and collect this beast of a weapon, the Outbreak Prime, the exotic pulse rifle. But guys if you enjoyed the video do hit that like button, I do appreciate the support and the support really does help out. Subscribe for daily destiny, turn on the notifications so you don't miss a thing and I will catch you guys on that next one. Probably won't die, but something will. Always in the wrong, knowing where we stand.